What is up guys, welcome back to the channel, Nutty Foodie Fitness here. Today, myself and my brother are going to be having a DEXA scan. I don't really know much about these things, so I told my brother and he thought it would be interesting to find out, he's a numbers kind of person. Before I go any further in this video, I do just want to say, regarding body fat percentages, regarding weight, regarding numbers, as long as you feel happy, fit, comfortable in your own skin, then it really doesn't matter what a number tells you. Hence why I have absolutely zero interest in weighing myself, knowing these things, but I just thought for the video. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing. I also just thought it would be interesting to see how our numbers compare, you know, given I'm a female, my brother's a male, I'm obviously smaller, he's bigger, taller, has been training five years more than me. He's obviously gonna have a lot more muscle. I obviously have a bum <laughs> deposit fat in different areas. Now, without throwing any shade on body scan, given I do watch a lot of Greg Doucette, I have seen, for instance, I think he, he reviewed a video where Brian Shaw had the scan done and the results basically just showed how inaccurate they can be sometimes in certain situations. They can sway a lot more for the individuals. I'm just putting that out there. I thought that I would cross-reference numbers with one of the most accurate technologies this world has ever seen, which is, of course, Greg Doucette's laser eye. Just for context, I think it's been stated on the interweb that Greg Doucette's laser eye vision is 99.99998% 99 accurate. thought it would be cool to cross-reference between the actual DEXA scan and the laser eye technology. So, I have actually sent Greg um, <laughs> photos of me. I basically only just discovered how you actually tense your quads, which I had no idea about. And I have Greg Doucette's response. Before we look at what Greg thinks, I already had my own idea, I guess. Given I obviously know my body, I know where my body stores fat, my stomach area doesn't deposit that much fat, like it goes to different areas of my body, which are mainly my bum, my lower back, my legs. Long story short, I don't think I am as lean as people think I am. My guess is that I'm at, I'm gonna say 20.5%, that's my guess. But as I said, this really doesn't mean anything. Do you know what I mean? Like a person's body fat does not determine how fit a person is, how healthy a person is. Well, to some extent, but you know what I mean. This is just the weight it naturally sits at and the body fat that it naturally sits at. If you're a long follower of mine, you'll know. I've never followed a diet. I've just eaten for what feels good for me. And that's just the way I like to do things. So that's my guess. I'm saying 20.5%. Sent the videos, sent the photos. These are the photos and videos I sent him, by the way. Had to pose like how you're like meant to pose, yeah. if you know what I mean, Arms even up. though I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, Squeeze. So yeah, that was funny. This is so difficult. This is his response. <laughs> So I just finished going over your photos, videos, posing, and I'm impressed. Great physique. I think you should compete in bikini. Uh, going over your body, uh, hardly any fat anywhere, to be honest. The only spot I really saw any extra fat was in the glutes, and that's where you want it to be. Super lean abs, very defined biceps, your legs in particular, the quads looked amazing, and from the rear, not much hamstring fat. So really lean, looking to be 19% body fat, 25% being about the, you know, the healthy range, uh, 18 to 22 for like that high level athlete. So you're exceptionally lean, high level athlete. And this is just an off season look, amazing. You can literally do a bikini competition with one week of prep, so congrats. To I mean, I was quite taken aback. Oh. <laughs> Try not to break my phone. So yeah, I was quite taken aback by um, Greg's response to that. In regards to <laughs> stepping on stage, what are your thoughts, homies? Because I have a number of times been asked at the gym what I'm competing in or what I'm training for, and I'm like, I know, I'm just training for me. I do see that I feel like my, my physique could lend itself to the stage, but <laughs> I even responded to Greg and was like, I legit couldn't even go a week dieting, you know? Never say never. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, this is going to be super interesting just to see how 
the DEXA scan does compare to my prediction. The Greg's, we'll see what my brother thinks also and what I think of him. My brother has just finished doing a cut. He was down seven kilos and now I think it's around five kilos difference since ending the cut. To put things into perspective, my brother and I have basically the polar opposite approaches to fitness. The only thing we have in common is that we train hard, but otherwise, you know, he tracks all his food, weighs himself, follows a very regimented bro split, and I'm just the opposite. So <laughs> I feel like this will be just an interesting video to see how these things I mean, to be fair, I'm a female, he's a male. There should be some similarities in our genetics, potentially how much muscle we build, like our density. I don't know. If you are intrigued, please give the video a thumbs up and potentially I could do some more. The reason I have swayed away from ever doing like these sort of things is because numbers and things are so personal to a person. I never want anyone comparing their numbers to my numbers. I don't even weigh myself so I couldn't even tell you how much I weigh. Do you know what I mean? Healthy looks different on every single body type. Let's just say I weighed 70 kilos. Somebody else that weighs 70 kilos could look completely different. Basically just a number because you don't know like my ass could weigh half of me, you know? <laughs> like you really just don't know. So I guess this was a reason I was slightly a bit unsure of whether to film this video or not but again let's see how this pans out if you fancy comment down below what you think my body fat percentage is who knows maybe I might do be doing a quarter turn no I can't I can't pose I literally can't pose it's a skill in itself you know I'm gonna get ready to I don't even know how it works you just like sit in a and it starts to rain lovely oh and then I'm going out for food and drinks like out out Brother acquired. Hello people. <laughs> he is my older brother. So we are currently in Soho. We are literally just about to head into body scan. How are you feeling about this? We haven't actually spoken about what we think we are at all. Feeling very nervous. <laughs> feeling very nervous about, about this uh, this trial that God has put in front of us. Yeah, let's do a scan, let's get some stats. But have you an idea? I don't really know. But um, you weigh yourself. I weigh myself. You're the numbers and I, guy, and I, I was a, telling them. I am the numbers guy and I have a good sense visually for body fat. I'm going to guess in the range of 15 to 20%. Okay, uh, that's guess. quite a wide spectrum. Before we go in, let's give a guess. 17 and a half for me, midway in that range. I was thinking 17% for my brother, just because I know that even if a female looks leaner than a male, the male is still more likely to have less body fat than the female and what, yeah. from what I've seen. What are you estimating for me? Not sure, obviously girls are higher body fat in general, but we're not comparing like for like, we're comparing shredded nutty against a non-shredded brother, so. Who's been, how many months did you cut for? Cut for three months. Um, <laughs> a very vigorous cutting diet. Did a quite a solid cut. Uh, this is like the leanest you will see my brother, because you've made an appearance on the channel yeah. where you were. Uh, I still think even with a female, difference your body fat will still be substantially lower so what are you guessing for me because i i what think guessing? Guess. i'm guessing 20.5 percent nah lower say 15 15 15 who Greg knows Duset it's all guesswork like that's why that's why we're here to do the scan let's um, make, also let's Greg let the do did his estimations okay he estimated 19 percent for me okay i'm still going with 15 15 <laughs> it's crazy okay we're, we're going in Focus on the back of the door if you want. Perfect. So we have made it to Body Scan here with Philip. We've just had a little bit of a debrief so that we're all on the same page. Philip's just going to kind of talk us through a little bit. We're going to have a DEXA scan, the most consistent way of measuring your fat and body composition. So we're going to get a very good idea of how much fat you uh, carry, how much lean mass you carry. Um, we're going to look at bone density as well. We'll look at internal fat, that's the dangerous fat around your organs. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we're going to do is look at uh, basically compare your results. Um, with thousands of other people who've had their scans um, and then we'll get a real idea of like you are giving the best 20% or the worst 20% or... <laughs> Is there also a different uh, table for males and females? Yes, yeah, so we've got blue for the boys, Okay. okay we've got orange for the girls, the results will be will be quite different but we'll do those for both of you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a great uh, way to get a baseline, um, see where you are. Very low dose of x-ray, so we're measuring you know all of the fat in all of your body. I didn't realise it was going to literally be like this, yeah. I thought you know there was some kind of cocoon thing yeah. but, but this is fine, this, yeah. is fine. this is fine. Okay, okay. Right. thank you so much. 
much. Okay. And also, I'm going to be linking down below website, website yeah. just in case anyone else is interested in getting their body composition checked. So I'll put the link in the description box below. But again, this isn't sponsored. I'm just it's coming along out. and yeah. if we find out anything interesting or if we're genetic freaks <laughs> or if whether we need to work a bit harder at the gym. Yeah. Okay. All right, Stephanie. So let's take your weight. Okay, and if you just come over here, so if you put your back to the wall, back to the plate, thank you, and tall. Just get an inch to your right, uh, left, there we go, that's it. And step away, please. 168.9, five foot six and a half. Yeah, I, I've been five, six and a half for really? years, well, I've never been taller. With your head here, so put on your back, on your okay, head there. On your back. So I'm going to come and put your numbers into here. You're nervous. Right. You're so <laughs> nervous, I'm shaking. <laughs> Alright, so you're beautifully central. So just come back towards me a couple of inches up the table. Yeah. A little bit more kicking out and yeah. about there. It's fine. Yeah. Alright? Keep your hand fairly flat but not tense. So that's okay. like that. So your forearm is running parallel to the side of the table. That's great. And okay. relax. Relax. Okay. As soon as one says relax, you don't relax. No. So I'm going to start the table moving. Just relax. Okay. Imagine you're on the beach. Um, breathe normally. Eyes open or closed. I'll be sitting over in the corner. Yeah. I'll tell you when it starts and finish, I won't uh, speak to you during the scan. Okay? Okay. So just relax. Okay, we're scanning now. Right. I was on the beach. Right. I literally felt like I was sunbathing. Stand on there. And step away, please. 177. Just give me a second. How nervous are you? I'm going to put heartbeat music. Very nervous. Yeah. Very nervous. <laughs> You are lovely and central, Alex. Just come back up the table towards me. That's done. Start to just analyze the scan. All right. So, uh, Alex, that's yours there. I haven't seen anything yet. All right, yeah. I've seen, I've oh, my brother's already seen stuff. <laughs> I haven't seen anything. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not too surprised at what I've seen. I'm not looking. The results are in, homies. Was that a good gosh? That was a good gosh. That that was a good gosh. gosh. Yes. A couple of goshes exactly. going on. The reason it's a good gosh, because there was, it wasn't such a good gosh before it. So. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Right. I'm yeah. guessing that was maybe muscle. <laughs> Uh, nice. Nice. Certain certain patterns. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I feel left out here. My brother's like <laughs> analysing. The thing is, I don't actually know specifically what I'm looking at, but I'm spotting similarities. Okay. Right. So give it to us. Steph and Alex, um, you've got your reports. Okay. So the reports are produced straight after the scan. Yeah. I'm going to kind of go through the main numbers. What we've done, I'll give you an example here, is we plot your results um, against these um, tables, which yeah. is. Uh, 8,000 male scans and 4,000 female scans. So a lot of the numbers are new, some of the fat markers and the lean markers, um, and it just helps put the numbers into perspective, yeah. okay, provide some kind of a reference point. So, I'll start with you, Steph. Okay. I? Well, I think your numbers are pretty fantastic. Okay. Actually. Guys, did you hear that? <laughs> so, this is our kind of set of fat markers that we look at. Yeah. Um, and your body fat percentage is 19.9%. Now, that may sound high. No, no, 20.5 was oh, my okay. guess. All right, okay. Well, you're doing very, very well because you are in, um, in the top 10%. You're probably in about the top 7%. For, oh, body, wow. for body fat percentage. Okay. okay. As I said earlier, um, yeah. in a, before we started the scan, um, body fat percentage is not the best number for measuring your fat. It's a, it's a very easily identifiable number. But the problem with body fat percentage as a number is that it's affected by how much lean mass you have, how much muscle mass mm -hmm. you've got. Because if you're a bodybuilder with a huge amount of muscle, necessarily a yeah. smaller proportion, a smaller yeah. percentage of your yeah. body fat. So we have actually two numbers. <laughs> exactly. So not so fast. <laughs> so 
So we have uh, we actually then what we do is we give you two numbers. So we okay. give you one for fat and fat. one, one yeah. for muscle. So they're known as your fat mass index mm -hmm. and your lean mass index. And basically, yeah. what we do is we take BMI and we split it into fat and lean for height. Okay. okay. Even when we do that, your fat mass index, your fat marker, which is unaffected by muscle, is still in the top ten percent. So for, yes. your, for your height, yeah. you carry less fat than more than 90% oh, wow. of all the women I've ever scanned. Oh, really? In your age group. Okay, so you have stunningly low fat. Typically, like bodybuilders, people that are into mm -hmm. fitness, they're yeah. very, they track this, they track. Yeah. I literally just eat right. as and when and what my body craves, and I feel like I've got a very good balance exactly. between okay. you know, what I eat. Yeah. So. so you probably don't eat when you're not hungry. Yeah. Okay, so you have very low fat. Yeah. Um, your fat distribution is also very good. Um, what we're seeing is your fat distribution is at this end of the table, okay. meaning your fat is not being stored in your upper body. Okay, okay. Uh, it's in my bum. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, looking for the picture, it's in your bum. Very healthy fat distribution pattern. And um, because you carry so little fat in your upper body, your visceral fat, that's the internal fat, what we call bad fat, yeah. linked to cardiovascular disease, heart disease, yeah. type, uh, type 2 diabetes, is also really low. Okay. So um, from a fat point of view, you're, you're at the correct, you're the left hand end of the table, okay. you have very low fat, very yeah. good markers, very good fat distribution. So your muscle mass, yeah. so we measure muscle for height, okay, okay so that's our measure. Um, so your muscle mass is okay, it's okay. in about the 40th percentile. Okay. So it's higher than 40%. You've got more muscle for your height than 40% of, of women, okay? okay? But lower than 60%. Okay. Now, that's not low. The yeah. thing with muscle mass is we all kind of exist, we have a natural body type, right? Yeah. So some people are naturally very slim, some people are naturally kept more muscular, yeah. chunky. Um, and we kind of just are where we are, and our body gets into a natural equilibrium when it comes to muscle mass, right? Yeah. You know, most of your calories are burnt by muscle, so we kind of get into this natural muscle equilibrium, right? Yeah. Like what you eat is, is what you, your muscle you have. So your muscle is fine. Yes, you've got room for improvement. You could come sliding up the scale, mm -hmm. but at this end of the table, you know, this is bodybuilders. Yeah. And this is, um, you know, long-distance runners. Okay. okay. <laughs> the okay. Both farrows in this world. Yeah. So yeah. you know, muscle mass is uh, created by a different kind of stimulus. Yeah. You go to the uh, gym and do weights. You put a muscle building uh, stimulus on the on the muscles. If you run for 25 miles, you get a endurance yeah. muscle response. Okay. So I can train harder, guys. You can train, can train harder. harder. Yeah, so there's a good point. Yeah. So when it comes to muscle building, it's all about the program. Yeah. All right. Hey, this this is probably a good indicator because my brother follows a program and and numbers and and that, and I just go with the flow. Okay. So I think that this just proves if I had something, I'd be making a lot more gains right. quicker if I was following something. I thought we were going to see that my muscle. <laughs> so, okay. So okay. You know, it, it, the, the biggest reason people don't put on muscle is yeah. they don't work hard enough in the yeah. gym. Yeah, I do. I do work hard though. Okay. Last time I took my brother to the gym, he threw up when he followed what I do. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the interesting thing about your muscle mass, the way it's okay. distributed, and this is going to be reflected with Alex, is you have a very out of balance um, muscle distribution. Okay. In so, when I say out of balance, insofar as um, you seem to have a lot less muscle in your upper body, so which is basically kind of from the groin to the, okay. the neck. Yeah. It could be a little bit of genetics and ethnic uh, in here. So, for example, black people have this um, pattern. Yeah. Um, people who do CrossFit have this pattern. Okay. And most of your muscle is in your arms and your legs. Yeah. And proportionately a little less so in the upper body. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that is big muscle groups like the chest. The things I don't train, I don't train okay. the chest. So this is showing. <laughs> Finally, your bone density, this is what Dexter was invented to yeah. measure, so how tough your bones are. Your bone density is excellent. You have, you have really, really strong bones. Okay. Yeah. So, a very good report. Um, if, I were, if I was seeing this report uh, anonymously, I'd say uh, this woman has uh, you know, really low body fat, um, uh, good enough muscle, and great bone density. So, all the three things Dexter measures, which is bone fat and yeah. lean, um, they're all pretty good. Perfect. Yeah. And does it also tell you the weight of each thing? Like, how much my my muscle weighs in comparison to the fat. To get down to the, the nitty gritty, yeah. uh, you carry 11.1 kilograms of body fat. Okay. Now for a woman, that is low. That's like one right? dumbbell. Yeah, yeah. so 11.1 <laughs> kilos of body fat. Okay. You carry about 45 kilograms of lean, right? Which is muscle plus all the yeah. organs. So that's what, so you are 19.9%. Perfect, All right. okay. So uh, very good. So yellow is the fat. <laughs> Oh, okay, I yeah, see so, so, it, yeah. I see so it. So the gold is the, is the fat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so visceral fat is, is very low. 
So there's your body fat percentage. Okay. Okay, so that's 19.9%. Yep. Okay, this is your fat for height, this 3.9. Mm -hmm. So that's fat on its own. Yeah. Uh, these numbers are your distribution, and this number here is your visceral fat. Okay, so your VAT, which is actually visceral adipose tissue. Okay. So this is very low. Here's your lean for height, essentially muscle for height, at 14.9. Yeah. So those numbers that we've all plotted on here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and this is the this is so the random. This, this is the muscle distribution. Yeah. Here. So what I've done here on this page, we've got your lean mass in all parts of your body. So you can see how um, fat is spread out. You know, all the body parts. So yeah. right arm, left arm, uh, trunk, and upper body. Yeah. So you have, by the way, you're very even left to right. Your muscle mass is very even left okay. to right. Right, I'm intrigued now because okay. I said for Alex, because this is this is the leanest you've ever been. I think seventeen. Okay. Off by a little bit. Off by a little bit. So he's 20.6%. Okay. 20.6%. Okay. okay. As with um, Steph, your body fat percentage and your fat for height, the number we use, they are both in the same percentile. Yep. So it's, it's worth just plotting those. So you're about the 40th percentile. So body fat percentage and fat for height is about higher than about 40% of men in your age group, yep. but less than about 60%. Mm. So if you've been bulky, um, you know, typically you tend to put on fat with it. Yeah. Your fat distribution is um, very different to, uh, I would say very different. So overall, as a kind of overall body type, you too don't carry your fat in your upper body, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, coming from South Asian heritage, um, that's unusual, yeah. right? Because uh, Indian, South Asian tend to carry store fat in the yeah. upper body, all right? So you don't as an overall body, but you have a real hot spot here, yeah. okay? Yeah. So in the belly area, where men typically store yeah. their fat, you do. Yeah. Right? So right around the belly button area. Yeah. Um, that's what we're, we're seeing here. Yeah. And again, your visceral fat is also very low, bottom 5%. So but our bodies just don't want visceral right. fat. No, no, not, not at all. And that's a surprise. You know, again, South Asians tend to have high visceral fat. They tend to because they store more in the upper yeah. body, which you don't. We are half European, though, so maybe that. Okay. Yes. Is, uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Part, yeah. But nevertheless, I would expect your visceral fat, okay, to be in line with this. Okay. Right? So okay. I would expect your visceral fat to be about here. Yeah. It's down here. Oh, wow. Right. Very good. Um, your muscle. Um, so Steph, I think was in about 40th percentile for mm -hmm. muscle uh, for height. You're in the 50th. Yeah, so your muscle mass is um, average. Yep. Um, uh, so you know, room to increase, but you tell me that you were yeah, yeah. very skinny years yeah. ago, so you kind of long it's way. A yeah. This is probably to get from there to there, maybe eight, 10, 12 kilos of muscle. My journey has been a, a gain of 22 kilos. Okay, right, so, <laughs> wow. You have the same uh, muscle distribution as Steph. Oh, wow. um, uh, particularly, you have a lot of, most of your muscle is in your legs, so you're a squatter. Surprised, like in the sense of I, I know the, the the muscle mass that I've got on my legs, but I wouldn't. I've never at any point prioritised my legs over okay. my upper body, which so it's quite interesting because I don't really love right. legs day. No, right. Right. I, I, so, I, I hate leg day. Yeah. And, uh, you love leg day. But it shows me that women always love the leg day. Yeah, so, yeah. The chest day. Every day yeah. is chest day. Exactly. So yeah, it's quite interesting to yeah. hear that. So it? I'm a leg day skipper, but it shows in my results. <laughs> Um, so there's your muscle distribution and your bone density uh, is fine, it's good, um, it's still below average, um, but bone density is basically just you have to be in a range. So who's got the stronger bones? You have the stronger bones. You have the stronger bones. So, yeah, which, which, that's a, so it's a good thing for you, Steph, yeah, because... Muscle mass. Yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah, <but I> don't. <laughs> hey, it's the visceral fat. Sibling rivalry happening now. Is there a, a number for this bone density? We basically have what we call a score. Yeah. So um, we want to be between minus two and plus two. Okay. If you're at zero, that's right on the average. Yeah. So higher is better. You want to be closer to uh, plus two. Yeah. So um, Steph, you're at 1.6. Okay. So getting up towards two, um, and yours is uh, zero. You are right on the kind of average yeah. line. And is bone density something that we should be thinking about? And what part does it play in this? Okay, so bone density is basically how tough your bones are and how likely you are to break a bone. If your bone density is high, higher is better. Yeah. Uh, you're less likely to break a bone. The best thing you can do with your bone density is to do weights. Okay. So bodybuilders have very high um, bone density. Your bone density is probably higher than it would be yeah. if you weren't in the gym. Yeah. I'm actually really surprised about the the muscle and the legs because right. I've always thought that I've got quite good upper body genetics. Right. Avoid training it, okay. and as a result, I train my legs, and I always think my legs don't grow. Okay. But actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look, there at is the, muscles. Yeah. There is. There is muscle. Yeah. So I mean, that's your curves. You know, you see the pattern. Isn't that's so. Painful. Guys, look at this. It's literally yeah. the same. So this is uh, Steph here. So what we're seeing here, Steph, this is kind of arms, trunk, 
and legs. Yeah. Okay, so you can see legs are way ahead, followed yeah. by arms and then trunk way down here. Yeah. Alex has got exactly the same legs up here, arms a little below, but trunk way back here. Now, as I said, that could just be a family thing. It could just be, you know, as uh, a family, smaller trunk. Okay, yeah. so naturally we'd expect to find lower muscle in the upper body um, if it's shorter. Mm -hmm. If you've got long legs, okay, then you'd probably see, expect to see more muscle in the legs. Usually, how, how do people's compare? Right, so what we're looking for is a straight vertical Oh, line. wow, so we're completely... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah very much. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so strange. Now, your fat distribution, um, yeah. you can do nothing about. Right, yeah. Your body yeah. makes that call when it comes yeah. to fat. So, you know, as you lose and gain fat, maybe this will change. But uh, when it comes to, you know, you can do something about muscle, yep. yeah. but you can't do anything about fat. You're, so if you look at, uh, compare, this is Alex, uh, Steph. So here's yeah. his fat in the belly, right yeah. around the belly button. But, <laughs> what uh, what um, thing is that? Well, 70th percentile, <laughs> yeah, okay. Just have to out my brother on <laughs> yeah. that can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the, um, oh, but overall, kind of body type again, his, yeah. uh, his uh, generally, his um, fat is not in the upper body. This, yeah. is, this is in the limbs, right? Yeah. Yours, both of yours are down at the lower end. So uh, uh, overall body, down in the, uh, the limbs. Yeah. Um, and particularly looking at the belly area, um, also not in the belly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is interesting to compare, but this is very interesting, uh, the, the similarity yeah. of, of that. And so our visceral fat, is, are we in the same percentile? Um, or, or yeah, uh, so about the, yeah, so about the yeah, about the fifth percentile. Look, so low, the very low visceral fat here, mm -hmm. and here as well. So your step is where we'd expect it to be because we expect that yeah. to be in line, line with that. that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's fat for height. Yeah. So we expect those to be in line. Uh, Alex is way below, so we expect this to be in line with this. You know. Okay. So we expect him to be a little bit higher. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a freaky result, but a good mm. freaky. Good freaky. It surprises a lot of people, but how much do you think your skeleton weighs? Oh, that's a good question. Not even that much. Uh, 25? 2.6. 2.6? Kilograms. Your entire skeleton. Steph, yours is 2.5. Wow! Yeah. So when you watch cartoons and the little skeleton falls over and yeah. breaks to pieces, mm. our actual We're skeleton is like that. We're literally the same! Yeah. So yours is, uh, so a typical female skeleton is about one and a half to two and a half kilos, and a man two and a half to three and a half. Yours is is heavier because yeah. your bones are bones, bones of it. Bones yeah. Are yeah. So I put Alex's numbers in. Okay. I'm at sixteen point one five nine. Basically, you're putting in these numbers yep. to see how my brother can change his body composition yep. to be more like his sisters. <laughs> They're going for each other. Um, uh, yeah, so we're going to get your resting metabolic rate, which is a better formula for yep. the mass, mass, yep. resting metabolic rate. How much you burn at maintenance. Um, and uh, and then we'll look at uh, fat, fat target. Okay? okay. So we're entering. So by the way, so you're carrying 16.1 kilograms of body fat. Okay. Um, now. 16.1. Right, now I'm okay. Not so you're carrying 11.1. Okay. So I carry about as much fat as you do. So off the bat, at um, 16 kilos of fat mass, between 10 and 15 is what I call low body fat for a man. Yep. On, on average. Total lean mass is 59.46. So what we've got here, Alex, this is your resting metabolic rate of around 1,650 calories. Yep. Right. yep. Now, then we've got your activity level. Yes. And now, you tell me what you do, because everybody overestimates yeah. what they do. Yeah. And underestimates what they eat. Yeah. If you're moderate, you're only 2526. Yeah. So, uh, let's, I mean, we're only starting here with 25. Yeah. Um, now, so what? Guys, just so you know what's been going on, they're talking numbers and calories, and I zoned out. So <laughs> I'm, I'm back in the room now. <laughs> You did zone out. I did. Just... <laughs> calories, switch off. <laughs> <laughs> Zero interest. Whereas I, yeah, whereas I, I enjoyed that. Very, yeah, so very, this, very informative. Really? We're more here for my brother than for me. He was like so up for coming to get this scan done. Okay, so 500 million years later of Alex speaking to Philip um, about numbers have finally come to conclude. My main conclusion will be different to yours, so you might as well start first. The muscle thing was just quite surprising to me. I, I thought that there was a lot of muscle here and not a lot of muscle here. So the fact that my legs are quite muscular, I'm, I'm happy with that. In terms of body fat, I feel like I was quite, like, you know, quite accurate with what I thought. For me, I'm, I also found the, the distribution between upper and lower body quite interesting. I wouldn't have expected that we would both be yeah. much higher on the, on the, on the leg muscle mass. That I'm quite, Although quite Grant, surprised. my boyfriend, has said a lot to me that, oh, you've got really good legs. Like, he's always said that to, about yours. Yes, Grant. <laughs> I found that interesting. Yeah. I, 
I'm not that surprised. I'm not surprised by the differences between the tween us. Obviously, yeah. you visually can see yeah. the difference. I think I see something like this as interesting in the sense of it shows the value of numbers. And this is where we differ. Obviously, genetically we're similar, but our approach is different in the sense of I'm very interested in the numbers. I really enjoyed looking through the stats, talking about like, calories. She actually zoned out completely in, in, in that section of this. And I think something- Different like, lifestyle approaches. I've yeah. gone out with more knowledge in terms mm -hmm. of improvements for going forward. For that reason, I found this very, very interesting. Just talk about calories, I know you zoned out, but what we say to clients is you don't have to count calories, yeah. but calories count. Yeah, yeah, of course. You manage your uh, intake and yeah. it just kind of works exactly you're, you've got a bit more of a project yeah. yeah where you're trying to build muscle without putting on too much fat you're, you're going somewhere else yeah. yeah the main thing is whatever works for that person you know, exactly. if, yep. if someone cannot stand the idea of putting in the numbers yeah. for everything they eat hmm. then don't just totally. be a bit more mindful totally. if somebody struggles to put on weight track like, i just think whatever works for the person yeah. fantastic exactly. so i think if for anyone who's watching the video and you're trying to take something away about what you should do in your own program and you're like a girl and you're looking at what Steph's done. There's no point making a comparison between what we've just seen here and what you're doing because as this shows, we are all completely different. Although genetically we are similar in how we've-, we've In that shown, weird we've, thing. We've, we're still very different. different. We've got very different uh, metabolisms. We are also, as, as Philip just said, we're trying to achieve different things. Mm -hmm. Steph yeah. is training because she enjoys I it. and she just it. Goes, <laughs> I really enjoy it, but I have particular things that I'm trying to achieve yeah. and obviously for me it make it makes sense that I pay more attention to numbers yeah the fact that Steph doesn't is totally fine for her but yeah. if you are watching this video and you're trying to achieve something obviously this is, approach isn't gonna isn't gonna work for you takeaway from this is do what works for you yeah as much yeah. information as you can the more knowledge you have the the better you're gonna go about things Obviously, when you get pleasantly or uh, unpleasantly surprised by by data, you've got something to work on. Inform yourselves, but do what works for you. If anyone else is interested in checking out your stats, in the description box below. And I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Really thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you very much. Like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell down below. And one final thing, guys. Stay, Stay nasty. It's obviously very cool to have someone say your physique is sick. But again, not saying that you need the external validation for you to know that you you look sick. So it's currently 3 a.m. It's been good. Yep. <laughs> we're gonna make some food. Yep, we are. And we're gonna party. Drink responsibly, people. That's true. Don't drink like Steph. If you've made it this far in the video, comment. Alcohol. <laughs>